Good day, thank you for joining us. Um, if you can remember last week we went over some equations with fractions and in this week's lesson we will be doing exponential equations. So how do, how do we identify exponential equations? What are their format? So basically it will be any sum that has an exponent which is a variable. So let's say the sum has a variable that has x as the power okay so it's 2 to the power of x is equal to 32 so this is a very unorthodox equation we're not used to seeing something like this so how would we go about solving this so the first thing that i'd always want you to do if seeing exponential equations where the variable is a power the first thing you need to do is try and make the bases the same on both sides so what does that mean um, you can see that x is is the power right and its base is as you can see over here is 2 so obviously 32 is the base as well so we'd like to make 32 the same as the base of x so the base of x is 2 so we have to make 32 2 as well so we're going to have 2 to the power of x still over here. Then we're going to bring this base to 2, right? So after you've done that, what do we need to do? You need to, you need to think, what do I need to do to make this side still equal to the same thing? Okay? So make, make it equal... The same amount so basically what I'm saying is you need to figure out how you can make this 2 still equal to 32 and the easiest way we can do that is by looking at powers okay so if we're looking at powers what can I what can I put 2 to the power of what to get 32 so if you're going to try and work that out you're gonna to get to the final answer of 5 so as you can see, 2 to the power of 5 is going to give me 32. Therefore, I've made this side still equal to 32. So, therefore, this is not wrong. Okay? So, once that we have... Once that we have the bases equal to the same thing, what's going to happen is the bases are going to fall away. So, after we've made the bases equal to the same thing, we can officially make them fall away. So that means that our final answer is now going to be x is equal to 5. So this is the first example of exponential equations, the easiest as it's going to get. So the first thing we always do is we try and make the bases the same on both sides. Once we do that, we make it equal the same amount. Okay. So the new base that we've made, we have to make it equal the same amount. In this case, it have to equal 32. And then after that, we can say that the bases are going to fall away so after the bases fall away the x comes down from the top of the 2 and the 5 comes down from the top of the 2 and we end up with x equal to 5 so moving on to another example so this is example number 2 what we got is 9 to the power of x plus 1 is equal to 81 so as we know, our first step is to make the bases the same on both sides. So if we're going to do that, we can see that we can make 81. We can bring it down to a 9, right? So we'll keep 9x plus 1 is equal to 9. So what do we do to 9 to get to 81? Remember, we have to make both sides. We have to still make this side equal to 81, right? So we square 9 to get 81. So we left 9 squared. As you can see, the bases are now the same. So what we need to do is, we need to, the base will fall away, right? So we'll be left with x plus 1 is equal to 2. So you can see that the base have now fallen away. So from here, what you can do is solve for x as per normal, okay? So we're going to now solve for x as we usually would. So x is going to stay on this side and the 1 is going to go over. So it's going to be 2 minus 1. x is equal to 1. Cool. Let's look at another example. 
in this case we have 3 to the power of x plus 1 is equal to 1 over 27. So how are we going to do this? So we have to try and get the fraction as the same base, okay? So once again we're still going to try and get the same base. So the base we're working with is 3, right? So if I'm going to bring this down as 3x plus 1 is equal to. So let's say I'm still going to make the base 3, right? So how do we get from a whole number to a fraction by putting it to a power? The way we do that is by putting it to the negative power. So the way I want you to look at this is look at the denominator. What do I have to do to this base to get to the denominator? I have to put it to the power of 3. And because it's a fraction, I'll put it to the power of negative 3. Okay? Because 3 to the power of negative 3 is going to give me 1 over 27. So anything to a negative power is going to give me a fraction. So once we've done that, we can see the base are the same. So the base will fall away. We'll have x plus 1 is equal to negative 3. So you can see now we've gotten to the situation, so we can just solve for x now. So x is equal to minus 3 minus 1, so x is equal to 4, negative 4. Cool. So moving on to the next example. What we have in this case is 3 to the power of 2x plus 3 is equal to 27 and x plus 5. So that's the power of x plus 5. So what we got to do still, we have to bring this base equal to the base on the left, right? Because we can make 3 equal to 27. So how we can do this is we can go 3, 2x plus 3 is equal to. So we'll have our base of 3. And that would have to be to the power of 3 to get 27. So, because it already has exponents over here, this answer that you've based out now, you're going to put it into brackets, okay? So that goes into brackets now. Let me just put that in color for you guys. So, that's in brackets. And then we still left with to the power of x plus 5. Okay? So, once you've done that, what you need to do is apply your laws of exponents. And the law of exponents that pertains to this example is where we have a power to a power, right? So what would happen is we times these two powers by each other because this brackets, okay? So what's going to happen is we have 3, 2x plus 3 is equal to, so this will now be 3 still as the base, so now we're going to times the exponent, so 3 times x first, then we have 3x plus 3 times 5 which is 15. So now we can see we have our new exponent here for this 3 on the right, and the bases are the same, so once again we can just make the bases fall away. So we have 2x plus 3 is equal to 3x plus 15. So we can bring the 2x over to the right because it is the smaller variable. So once we do that, we're going to have 3x minus 2x, right? And then we're going to have 3 minus 15 on this side. So what we're going to be left with is x is equal to negative 12. Cool. In our next example, we have 9 to the power of 2x plus 3 is equal to 27 to the power of x plus 5. So this is another example where we need to try and look now 
at the numbers that we are working with. So we are working with 9 and 27. So you can see 9 is the smaller number. So obviously you'd want to get this base down to that 9. But if we got it down to the 9, is there any way that we could still make it equal 27? We can't because if I do 9 squared, I'm going to get 81. I can't get 27 and that's the smallest square that I can work with. So what we need to do is we need to look at both sides now and see what we can do to both sides. Okay. We need to make both sides have the same base. And what base could we make these that they could still equal 9 and it could equal 27? That base would be 3. Okay. So we can have 3 as our bases. Because we know that 3 squared is going to equal 9. And we know that 3 cubed is going to equal 27. As you know, once we get a base, and there's already exponents before we got this base, we need to put this into brackets, right? And then we can just put in our 2x plus 3, which is already there, and our x plus 5, which was already there as well. So now we can go at working this out now. So remember the 3 will stay the same. So we'll just times the exponent. So we have 4x plus 6 is equal to 3x plus 15. Bases will now fall away. We have 4x plus 6 is equal to 3x plus 15. 4x, bring the 3x over. So it would be negative. And then we have 15 minus 6. So we're left with x is equal to 9. Now to move on to our last example. This is example number 6. So what we get given is 4 times 16 to the power of x is equal to 8. So with any solving for x example, what we want to do is get x by itself. Okay? Because we can see that 4 over there, it's kind of in 16 to the power of x's space, right? So we want to get it out of there. So how are we going to get rid of that? Because this is times we know that we need to divide to get rid of that 4. So what we do to the one side, we need to do to the other side as well. These fours will cancel each other out. And what we will be left with is 16 to the power of x staying there is equal to 2. So we can see that 2 here is the smaller base, right? So we're going to see if we can get 16 down to 2, which we can do, okay? So what we're going to be left with is 2 to the power of 4. Now remember to really add the exponent of x, so this is going to go in brackets. And then we keep our x over there. And that is equal to 2, right? So now we'll have 2 to the power of 4x. Because remember we times that 4 by that x. And remember this is 2 to the power of 1. 2 to the power of 1 is equal to 2 still. So we're just trying to identify what exponent is above the 2. So once we get that, we know the base will fall away. So we're left with 4x is equal to 1. And once we do that, getting x by itself as usual, divide by 4, divide by 4. 4s cancel each other out. And we're left with x is equal to 1 over 4. I really hope this lesson was helpful. That will be the end of the recording for today. Thank you.